minus v is less than u is less than v. Um, yeah, so it, you restrict it from just be this whole, just be the whole right side under the zero divisors. Yeah, so this, this, this line here is v equals to u, right? Yeah. This is v equals to minus u. So yeah, that whole section right there. Outside of the origin. Sorry, having sudden trouble. Because u is like x here, right? Yeah. Um, I could also look at this as u equals to minus v, and look at this one as well, u equal to v, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm just juxtaposing the role of u and v. So I, I think I think this one u is between, right? Minus v and v. Minus v and v. Which is, yeah, it'd be that whole right section. But this is this is minus v and this is v. So you have to be that side of this one, right? And right, u is less than v to the left of the v and to the left of u equal to v to the right of I think it's I think I think it's up in here. Um Be lower than it too, yeah. under the, because if you if you don't include zero, um, you at least on at least this side it would be greater than b than minus v as well. Hmm. Um, no, but we should double check me on this. Um, uh, really go on the case. So my, 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 my thinking here, and I could be wrong, is that it's in here for that case, number one. And for case number two, you have u less than v and that is not the way I want to think about it. I want to say v. v is greater than minus u and v is less than at the moment.
Oh, you can erase that stuff up there if you want, because we're, I think we're done with all that, actually. There's something perverse about it, but like I'm having like a lot of my difficulty is because I'm I'm being an idiot with respect to the U V notation. I think it would be productive to drop the U V notation for a second. Like what is this an X Y notation? You just humor me out or try it this way. Instead of looking at trade U squared um, minus V squared greater than zero. All right, that's that's what we're trying to do, right? Yeah. Replace this with the thing we have more intuition with. Sad, but it's true. X squared minus Y squared greater than zero. Like, see if you can analyze that inequality. Find the solutions out of that. Then you can translate back to U V. Yeah. But part of the part of my problem is that I keep switching U's and V's because I don't have. I'm I'm very bad about just switching them in my thinking in the intermediate step because U and V are not a good notation. Uh, X and Y are so much better because it looks different. That's stupid, but it it actually matters. <laughs> <clears throat> say x is greater than y for like y to infinity, right? It'd be like the range. For case one. For wherever your particular point in y is. Like oh, wait, pick, no, pick, 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 pick down a number there, yeah. How about that? Well, see, if you if you, if you wouldn't get anything down here, because let's say like you get uh, like 0, negative 1, the y inverse, or the minus y would... would so we, you want to work in x and y, or u and v? I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, so like, we know that e... So if we have y, so y minus means, one. I mean, think, think, think. This would have to be one, and this is not a true statement. Uh huh. So it couldn't be anything else. So that here. that's out. That's right. Yeah, it could be here. I'm th pretty sure, because if you have like negative one to like point nine. Wait, yeah. You, no, you can't. You can't have negative one actually. So it'd be like negative. Point nine to or I should I should just it's to something to one it's negative I was gonna say point nine. Um, <laughs> so we'll have x 
x is negative 0.9 and y is 1. And negative 0.9 is greater than 1. And this would be negative 1, yeah. So yeah, this would work too. Hmm. Why don't you try the point like 0, 1 though? That's right on the axis there. Right here? Yeah, 0, 1. to the box ten equality, right? Yeah. Cause well, it, would, it wouldn't matter because, you know, if you have point zero one, it you couldn't you couldn't get close enough, I'm pretty sure. Well just go back to the original problem, right? X squared minus y squared greater than zero. Yeah. If we try plugging in x equal to zero, y equal to one in that, does it does it work? No. Because um, it's less than zero. Right, so it's minus one. Um, so I think I think actually the region below and the region above, like the top of the x and the bottom of the x are both out. In contrast, if you try plugging in like say one zero, what happens? Um, one zero would work. Right. And the same for, say, minus one zero. Yeah. Uh huh. So I just think some, somewhere along the way we switched x and y or u and v and tricked ourselves into thinking that. I know I did. Like, I'm wrong about this. This is not. This is actually definitely not part of the solution. That's wrong. Um, oh, yeah, because y can't be greater than x. Yeah. So, look, look, like, here's a way we could think about this now that I think I have my. Or, let me just break. So this is x minus y, x plus y greater than zero, right? Yeah. So either we have x minus y greater than zero and x plus y greater than zero. All right, so let's just focus on that for a second. That is um, x greater than y and um, y greater than minus x, right? Mm -hmm. So that's um, minus x less than y. Oh yeah, we, we did less than x, right? Yeah, because we said u, we said v. We did it the other way. So y equals x is this guy, right? Yeah. And y equals minus x is this guy, right? So like less than x is below this line. Yeah. Right. And greater than minus x is above this line. Mm -hmm. So there's no point over here, which is both above this and below that, right? Yeah. But the, in here, right up in here, you have solutions which are both less than x and greater than minus x. So it's like this sector. Yeah. And then the other case is when, and this was what I was trying to do in the UV notation, but obviously I failed. No, um, you just flipped x and y somewhere along the point. That's a most likely, yeah. So y minus x minus y less than zero and x plus y less than zero. So that's the other way you can solve this inequality. You have you can either have plus plus or you can have minus minus, but that's the other way you can get a product of two things being positive, mm -hmm. right? And so that is x less than y, right? Mm -hmm. And um, y less than minus x. So if you draw the picture again x has to be, so this is y greater than x, so x, y equals x is this line, yeah. so you have to be above the line. Yeah. And then this, y less than, so you have to be below this line. Yeah. Over here, there's no solution to those, but over here, in between, we get this. Yeah. So the solution set, the solution set to um, u squared minus v squared greater than zero is, is like a bow tie. But it's, yeah. it's the opposite of what I was originally getting, it's, which is, I, when I got that, I was like, it's not what I remember. Well, there's a good reason for that, it was wrong. And by the way, I cheated. Oh, yes. So when you're stuck on this kind of thing, like Desmos is like super, super reassuring. Um, but. 
So, yeah, this is, we're basically, we got this bow tie. Now, okay, so, lovely. Um, what am I saying? I'm saying that in that bow tie region, that's where what happens? That's where the formula, square root of 2 squared minus v squared makes sense, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, remember, let's remember what we're doing. We're trying to understand what's the inverse function to the exponential. Right? Yeah. So, that has to also involve the question of this wasn't, was not, a, the question I'm about to point out wasn't really an issue in the complex case, because in the complex case, the complex exponential hits everything except for the origin, right? Yeah. But what about this one? Where is the image of the exponential actually hidden? Everywhere except, like, top and bottom. But no, well, you have this part, too. Is it, I mean, here's a different question, different formula. Is it the bow tie? Or does the, do these formulas I just found make sense for a larger, sub, larger set of the codomain than the range? You know? Well, it's the bow tie for this part, but it's not the bow tie necessarily for that part. I mean, the, the, bow, the bow tie region is where the square root of u squared minus v squared is defined, you know? Yeah. What my, my, my question though is, where, what, where, what places does this formula actually hit in the W plane? Like, is it, is it on, is this, is this formula, is this function onto the bow tie? Or is it just onto a subset of the bow tie, you know? We would have to, I would say it's a subset of the time. Mm. But, so we're not, so W is not like a, like a generic hyperbolic plane? Well, W is a generic hyperbolic plane, but like, what I'm, so just, it's just language, you know? Yeah. So the function is a mapping from the hyperbolic plane to the hyperbolic plane, right? Mm -hmm. And the formula for the function is e to the z, f is e equal e to the z, right? Yeah. But the range of f is not equal to h2, right? So the codomain is h2, you know? Yeah. But that doesn't mean that it's actually the range. There are points which the exponential is mapped to. Like it doesn't map to the zero divisors. Yeah. Um, well, see, I thought like the hyperbolic plane would be like, um, right? Yeah. So, you know, that first part, I thought that, like, what we're mapping is, like, the real part of it, if that makes sense. Hmm. And this J part would be a different map. That is true. The real, that's actually a very good point. The, the real part of the formula goes to the real part of the output. The imaginary <laughs> part of the formula goes to the, yeah, so the V part of the output, right? Yeah. So, this... Here, I'll write it out. Yeah. See, the e to the z, what was it? It was e to the x cosh y, right? Yeah. Plus j e to the x cinch y, right? And, and you're exactly right. This is the the u, and this is the v. Yeah. So what, that's really the question, is what values do we attain with this formula for u and that formula for v? Yeah, and my, my next thing was, because u, I mean, you know, this, that, that's the map you get really on the real part, not on the imaginary part. Because, you know, your J term doesn't care whether or not, it only cares if you use zero. You has to be greater than zero. So, I mean, like, you'd be mapping anything above. <laughs> imaginary would be anything above, whereas this, well, it'd be like a it'd be a weird line. This, I mean, this. It'd be like a line, and then it'd be missing pop points along that it, line. It is. Um, it's possible to find a formula for the inverse 
whose natural domain is bigger than the like, logical domain of the inverse function. The logical domain of the inverse function has to be the range of the function. Yeah. Right. You, you don't have an inverse which serves for points which are not in range because it's just not an inverse in that case. Like the inverse maps, the inverse of a function maps from the range of the function back to the domain, you know? So yeah. you can't map from points outside of the range back to the domain. It's not an inverse. It's just it's like, look, at, look at the formula though, e to the x cosh y. Like what do we, I mean exponentials are positive, right? Mm -hmm. well, how do cosh and cinch work? Oh man, let's see. At, uh, over the hyperbolics, does it does it look the same as normal? Since you normal. Um, well, I will show you what I tell my calculus students all the time. Is the cosh looks like this, <laughs> and cinch looks like this. I did check what they about. Uh, okay. That's exactly what I was looking at. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, so they're they're actually exponential. Um, so, mm -hmm. yeah. So we know. Oh, but. Mm -hmm. So that means our the um, the real axis. Oh yeah, but I mean I feel like that's saying that's saying that cosh over the real part, like, you know, like that, that range, or that domain would be infin negative infinity to infinity, and that, and that one's going to be, and that range would be, and the cinch's range is the same. Yeah, cinch, it looks like the V part can be as positive or as negative as you want, because cinch gets yeah, so as like, positive or negative. But, but what about the real part? The real part is e to the x cosh y, right? Yeah, so it has to be greater than 1. Uh-huh. So well, the cosh y has to be greater than one. But yeah. The exponential, you know, if you make x very, very large and neg very negative and large in magnitude, mm -hmm. then e to the x gets very, very close to zero. It never obtains it, right? But it can get as close to zero as you want. So. Okay. Well, then it'd have to be going somewhere in these two directions, I think. Then. Yeah. Yeah. So would it be a bow tie? I don't know. I feel I, like it might be that whole half plane. I think it's just the half. Well, the, the devil's in the details in terms of, like, um, let's see here. So if you look at, if you look at V over U for this, yeah, you get tanch, tanch Y, mm -hmm. and um, they have that, so... Oh yeah, tanch. What's tanch look like? Tanch looks like like this, right? Yeah. Well, so this is this is actually an element of minus one to one. Yeah. Which means that the ratio of v and u, which is describing the slope. I mean, basically, this means that this image. Mm -hmm. is stuck between the line of slope 1 and the line of slope minus 1. And it, it, U is positive, right? Yeah. So this is all to say that the range is actually yeah. it's just the half of the bow tie. It's just, it's a quarter, it's a quarter point in between. Yeah. So that this, this right here is actually the range of, of the exponential. But just that. Just that half, yeah. So it's it's like it's kind of surprising. Yeah. In the sense what we what we saw and what we did for the complex case is not as relevant as you might hope. No. Because the complex numbers are just so much nicer in that sense, like the exponential is um, it's onto the deleted complex plane, but the hyperbolic exponential is not onto the hyperbolic plane. There are large, 75% of it's not in the image. Yeah. So we actually cannot use 
See, go ahead. Uh -huh. In the real sense, the log the log function is also 75% not in there. Because like, it's the, uh, you know what I'm saying? The real sense, what do you mean real sense? And that's what it looks like. Oh no, but the log goes to minus infinity. This way? You're talking about like log x? Yeah. Yeah, that, that it goes through one at zero. I mean, it goes through zero when x equals to one. Log of one is zero, and then like it approaches minus infinity as um, x goes to zero from the right. It's the reflection of the, the graph of the exponential across the line y equals x. Uh, yeah, it is. I'm thinking of e to, I guess I'm thinking of e to the x. Hmm. Yeah. No, you have to restrict it here. Uh -huh. hmm. Is there not, is that, is that, maybe I'm thinking of the square root function? Yeah. Yeah. Like that only has like 75, yeah, that only has 75% of the graph. But you include the origin. Okay, so we have a range of e to the z now, and it's. See, it's that half bow tie, but it's it's. Wouldn't it be cut at some point too? Since like it had the the reciprocal. Oh no! Because I mean, as long as you go on that point, it always be one and negative one. Hmm. Actually, the only. Wouldn't it only equal negative one? No. Yeah, let's let's try this formula. Let's 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 actually look at some numbers here and like. Gain a better appreciation of what we're doing um, with some a specific, a specific point you should, Okay, yeah. so um, I'm going to erase this little snippet in here, and so okay. So how about like uh, let's look at z equal to I don't know something like natural log of two plus. Um, J times the natural log of three. I don't know, just to. Oh, I'll probably regret that. We start. We started fresh. Let's instead do uh, three plus two J. How about that? Okay. I don't know. See what happens with that, right? Um. So what's e to the z? E to the 3, E to the 2J. Right. Um, let me just keep going down that. So I've got E to the 3 times gosh, 2J plus J. Wait, no, gosh, 2 times cinch 2. Right. Now we can try to take the logarithm that we found of that. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll use the easier formula. How about that? So we're saying log of um, you know e to the 3, cos 2, plus j e to the 3, cinch 2, right? Mm -hmm. So we got natural log of the square root, u squared minus v squared. What is u squared minus v squared here? It's, it's that gives you a cos squared minus cinch squared. You, you get e to the 3 squared, right? You can write it out if you want, I'm going to be lazy. That's 2 
Wait, so you need to use six. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. But yeah, you get three. Let's see, your V over U is E to the threes cancel and we get tangent to, right? natural log of e to the 3, yeah. which is So this was log of e to the z. So log of e to the z gives us a result that's like the natural log, like over the real. Like log of e to the z equal to z. Mm -hmm. And that's how that works over the hyperbolics. I hope so. I mean that that's what I mean if if it's the inverse if the if, if it's the inverse function, then it better get us back where we started, right? Yeah. It's just not the case of the real numbers. I was like, ah. Now, um, I... What that happens if you take the natural log? Then? I don't think natural log is a function which is defined on the hyperbolic. Okay. Unless you're going to take, like, the natural log of some kind of hyperbolic expression, but... Um, all right, so what I'm, right. <laughs> what happens, what happens if we look at a point which is not in the range of e to the z, but we take the logarithm of it? Because, like, um, a v bigger than u? Yeah, something like, no, 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 a point, a point which the formula makes sense for, but a point which is not in the range of the function. So like the range of the function is this right here, right? Yeah. But we have this other part of the bow tie which is not in the range. Uh -huh. uh, uh, so, for example, just to be really boring, minus one. Yeah. We just plug it in backwards, right? What, yeah, what, where does that go? Can I erase this? Mm -hmm. I'm going to erase this here. Yeah. Um. Well, you get an undefined point with tangent because you got a division by zero. That's you, that's me. Oh, no, 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 it's, it's, it's okay, it's okay. Just a second here. Um, this is the square root of 1, right? Oh, I went backwards. You're going forwards. So. J times inverse tanch of V over U. Okay, so here V is equal to 0, U is equal to minus 1, right? Mm -hmm. So that's 0 over minus 1. Yeah. 0 over minus 1 is okay, that's just 0. Yeah. And the inverse, tan inverse hyperbolic tangent of 0 is 0. Mm. So what we actually have here is just the log of 1, in other words, 0. one, 
is equal to zero, but if you put the point in minus one zero, oh wait, no, you go back. No, you're fine. The other formula will give you the same because you get, again, zero over minus over yeah. one. Yeah, because b squared is minus. Um, so why is that? Then why is that not in our range? Like I said, it's a the formula that we derived. Uh, I mean, the formula has a larger domain than the range. Now, what, what, which precise algebraic step is responsible for that? Uh, um, you know, you could, here, to give you a, a, a more mundane example of this, um, you can have f of, f of x equal to the square root of x, right? Mm -hmm. And so you get y equals the square root of x, right? Solve for x, x equal to y squared, right? So g inverse of y equal to y squared, right? And then if you just say, okay, well, look at this. What's the domain? Zero to infinity. I mean, no, negative infinity. Right, everything, right? Yeah, I was talking about the range. But What's the range? Zero. Oh, What's that the range of f? Zero to infinity, infinity right? Yeah. And that has to equal the domain of, that has to be equal to the domain of the inverse, right? Mm -hmm. So what we're worrying, the problem we're worrying against here is the natural domain, as indicated by formula, versus the logical domain indicated by set theory. The, the natural domain, as given by formulas, can be larger than the actual domain, which is, which is for which it actually serves as the inverse function. Like, this is actually wrong, because it's not the inverse, right? Like, this is, this is also the domain of the inverse is zero to infinity, is zero to infinity right? Oh, no. See, the thing is, the thing that's going on here is that there's also an f2 of x equal to minus the square root of x. And when you get that, it also gives you the same yeah. inverse. So that's the issue we're up against here. Yeah. There's another function, not the exponential function, but a slightly different function whose inverse function has the same formula. Minus e to z. So the question is, what is that mystery other function? Not the exponential. What's the other function that um, shares an inverse formula of the same hyperbolic exponent. Look here, so this, you notice that the log of 1, it, it, to be fussy, I really should give a different name. I should have like a name for the um, hyperbolic log, which is reflective of the fact that it's the inverse of the exponential function. And then I should have another another name for this formula that has a larger domain, the bowtie domain. You call it the bowtie function or something, right? The bowtie function restricted to the right bowtie, it's the hyperbolic log. The bowtie function restricted to the negative half of the bowtie, it's not the hyperbolic log anymore. It's the inverse of a function related to the exponential function, but not the exponential function itself. 
What's log of 1? Well, log of 1 is also equal to 0. See that? That is the log, natural log of 1, and you still have inverse hyperbolic tangent of 0. We, we need to try another point to try to better appreciate this. Like, something like what would this point be, maybe? Maybe like, uh, we could do one over here, maybe. How about this one? This would be uh, minus 2 plus j, perhaps. That's like a good one. Why don't we try log of minus 2 plus j? How's that going to work out? Well, I, I think. And I say log, but I really need both that function of that. <laughs> well, I think the other part of it wouldn't it just be minus e to the x or e to the z? Yeah, I think so. And the I think you're right. I think that's the mystery function is minus the exponential. Yeah. So. Oh. Could we just? No, you can't. Because uh, I like, get you know, why set theory wise, like you can't have anything outside of the range because that's the only inputs you're putting in. Uh huh. But like, that doesn't work. So here's the range of e to the z. Yeah. And there. This is the range of minus e to the z, of course, because it just yeah. flips to the origin like a so, you know? So what happens when we take the um, the exponential of that? Um, if we're in the hyperbolics, that should get rid of that. Well, we get we get e to the natural log of square three, right? Yeah. And then we get eat. And then we get um, cosh of inverse tangent of one half plus j, yeah. right? Times the cinch of the inverse tangent of one half. I know maybe you've never thought about how you calculate things like that. Um can you just rewrite it as, oh, I don't know, I don't think that, uh, like, cinch of one half over, or cinch inverse over cosh inverse? And then get rid of the cosh. No, it doesn't, it doesn't work like that. No. no. I didn't think so, because it was like a composite. It was within. Well, I think it's in the range because isn't it from negative one to one? For tanch? Yeah. Oh no, because B would be one. So how do you how do you calculate the hyperbolic cosine of the inverse tangent or something? You know. How do you calculate the cosine of the inverse tangent of something? Calculate the angle of the tangent. 
what if you what if you had the cosine of say the inverse tangent of you know three over two or something like that you know um, which you can do yeah yeah but so let's just say you have theta you know okay opposite side is three adjacent side is two so this is uh, two over the square root of what you know uh, two three um, four. Nine thir square root of thirteen. Yeah, right. So this this works because Cosine squared plus sine squared is one, right? The corresponding idea for our hyperbolics is based on cos squared minus sin squared. Yeah. So I think I could get in trouble here, but to do something like this, you could make like a little hyperbolic triangle, quote unquote. This is a heuristic, all right? And say, okay, call that. Think of this thing as theta, you know. So the um, well, that would say it's an opposite one, yeah, uh, two, two, and then It'd be minus. Remember, so I think this is square three. Minus two, yeah, uh huh. Because cos squared minus sin squared, so to speak, equals two. Yeah, but cost should be, um, two. okay. Right. So if I'm, if I'm right about this, and we'll check, we'll, let's check the Wikipedia here in a second, but, um, oh. um, you know, then, then the cost of theta should be what here? Cost of theta should be, uh, two over root three. And then this should be j one over root three, and all of that is multiplied by e to the log of root three, which of course is root three, right? Things are obstructing something. See, but that's, wouldn't that be the square, like cosh squared, not just cosh? The 
This squared is four thirds. This squared is one third. This minus this is two three thirds. Oh yes, but I, I, I think this perhaps it should be minus one over um, root three. I could be wrong. Don't 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 assume I'm right. Okay. Shouldn't we just find a beta? happened if we had done what would have happened if we had done um, log of minus 2 minus j like instead of up there yeah it's one down The same, right? We have, oh, no, you get minus minus. Oh, 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 look at this. I have neglected my minus. I lost the minus. I'm a dummy. Oh, yeah. Minus. Now that doesn't change this, but it does change this. Oh, there's that minus. And I'm happy about that because then it's two minus two, minus, two, minus, minus j, which of course is minus. Minus two plus j, right? So we actually sent it the log, the exponential of the log didn't take us back where we started, it took us to minus what we started. Yeah. And um, if I do this, it's take us minus to that and give us two plus j. Yeah. So in some cases it gives us the same fit. in some cases, yeah. So like for negative one zero, we have a two mappings for it, but for the other way, 
Let me, let me draw a picture of what's going on. And let me try to explain this again. The, um, why this matters to the study of like calculus with the hyperbolics is that um, So, so here we have the range of the exponential. Over here we have the range of minus the exponential, right? Um, and the uh, this, this function down right here. It, uh, ironically enough, serves as a inverse function to both of those, the exponential end. Um, see what I'm trying to say is log. Okay, so like in here, we have that I'm just going to keep calling it log if that's okay. Yeah. I mean, I know that's kind of bad, but so the log of um, minus e to the z is actually equal to z again here. Yeah. And I want to say minus e to the z to the to be minus e to the log of z, I should be careful, um, z go minus z, I think, sorry, I gotta think, if it's minus z, I think that's what we calculated. So like here, we have w equal e to the z. Mm -hmm. Over here, we have w equal to minus e to the z. You know? Mm -hmm. And so the um, e to the log of w equal to w again. And log of e to the z equal to z again. No, there we should have so e this, to the log of w is equal to, w, to the minus w. Ah, so we have e to the e to the log of w with a minus out front. Yeah, it's going to be minus. Equal to w again. The inside parts were. And then the log. Uh, minus e to the z, I guess, is equal to z again. Yeah. I think those are the appropriate relations. Because again, the, 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 the quote unquote log, which I would also call the bowtie function here, serves as the inverse function for both the exponential and the um, negative of the exponential in the appropriate regions, either the right bowtie or the left bowtie. You know, you, you might say, okay, well, this is, the, I mean, who cares? <laughs> you know? No, but I don't, I, I need to prove the log of the 